Each path in life provides opportunity. Some are well traversed, some forged on our own. Down each road, trials, triumphs, tragedies. Each of us is in search of a dream. In the end, the proverbial road less traveled may be the most rewarding of all. Junior Yell leader Roy May loves Texas A&M. Watch him at midnight Yell practice or leading the team onto Kyle Field, and you'll see being a Yell leader is pure joy. I'm ridiculously excited. This is this is just awesome. This one of the best things about being an Aggie is midnight Yell. That was awesome. Uh, it was uh, what an experience. You know, starting out back at Duncan, uh, behind Duncan, um, you know, with the band and marching in, and uh, yeah, the band always gets me fired up when they play, and it's it, you know, it's just for real. You know, that's that's what's going through your mind. It's something that you anticipate and you wait for, and you can't wait to go to Midnight Yell, and then all of a sudden you're out there and you can't believe it's happening. Um, and you, you you know you see the crowd, you get to as you're pacing, you get to watch the the stands fill up. Um, you know, and, and all your friends are hollering at you and screaming your name, and um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, you want to pinch yourself. I know it sounds really childish, but uh, you just, it's hard to believe it's happening. Squad! 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 Run! Boom! Well run! Move! I got a little story for you, Ags. I love telling fables, uh, but I was really nervous just because it was the first one. Um, you know, I'd seen fables done before, but um, other than some rehearsal runs that I did, uh, you know, this was going to be the, the first fable of the year uh, for all of us. So I was just hoping I didn't forget anything more than anything. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I love telling fables. Uh, I love being able to get out in front of the 12th man and have a good time. Um, and you've, uh, Fable represents that perfectly. We're going to beat the fight in Texas Aggie class of 2015. Hell out of those right cells. Roy, better than most, understands that no price tag is sufficient for what he's experiencing at Texas A&M. I can tell you, I don't know if there's a honeymoon period, but it certainly, if there is, it certainly hasn't ended. Every time I put on uh, a yellow uniform to do any event, um, I am, uh, I'm blown away. Um, Every game's so much fun. I get getting to lead yells and, and get get the 12th man fired up. That's, that's the job. I mean, you know, going out there and leading the spirit to an entire side of, of Kyle Field, um, it's, it gives you chills. It's, there's nothing like it. Perspective changes everything. I have got to interrupt you right now Sorry. show you a picture of the World Trade Center. And the Pentagon is being evacuated. There is a large fire there. These are the first pictures we have in. Uh, this is from Somerset County, Pennsylvania. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. And freedom will be defended. Stationed at Fort Myer, Virginia, Roy was just down the road from the Pentagon on 9-11. Rescue and recovery was his mission. Everybody's lives paused that day, and uh, for, you know, for the weeks following, it was, um, it was, it was, it was a job. It was, you know, wasn't enjoyable, but it was uh, certainly something that, that changed us all. Just like anywhere else uh, in the military or even in the civilian sector, when you're going through hard times, and when you have your friends to your left and your right, uh, you know, it, it does make it easier. And then the bonds that you form out of those, you know, those harder times, are they're lifelong. They're, they're, they just can't be broken. One of those friends, an unlikely yet familiar name to Aggies, former A&M linebacker Mark Dodge. 
the one thing that I remember most about Roy was playing in the company flag football leagues with the guy. I mean, more than anything, that was kind of the, the funnest thing we did. I mean, he was a, a great athlete to begin with, so. Um, I, mean, I love playing football. We had a good time. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I still enjoy throwing the ball around before the game's out on Kyle. Roy and Mark were both in the U.S. Army's 3rd Infantry Regiment, often referred to as the Old Guard. Later, the two worked side by side in the Continental Color Guard, a specialty unit that presents the nation's colors at special events in the Washington, D.C. area. There was nobody that set the standard other than Roy. Roy, look at his shoes. I always, I always laugh at Roy. He spends more time shining his shoes, even when he's older, than anybody I'd ever met. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. He, he set the standard. I mean, with his uniform prep and his, his brass and everything that we had did in the old guard, there was nobody that did it better than he did. And it's because he wanted to be the best. Same thing happened in CCG when we prepped the, you know, prepped the flags for ceremonies and everything else. There's nobody more prepared than that guy. Nobody more competitive. And, and it doesn't surprise me where he is now, not one bit. Football was always a common thread for Roy and Mark. In the fall, the two would gather together with friends to enjoy college football Saturdays. If he wasn't busy on the, uh, like on Saturdays, uh, he'd go out and watch college football. There were a handful of us that were just avid, diehard college football guys. So we'd all get together and go out and watch games. It was pretty competitive and I always heard him talk about A&M and, and what it had and I didn't really understand what it was. I was a, you know, coming from Nevada, didn't really know the Texas A&M, the traditions, the culture, the values that, that A&M had. And he always talked about it and talked it up. And it's just funny how things kind of work full circle. Roy May was born August 7th, 1979 at St. Joseph Hospital in Bryan. His dad, Roy May Sr., class of 66 and one-time Maroon Band commander, was back in College Station to continue his education. Roy's father and grandfather each served in active duty in the U.S. Army, so Roy, following in their footsteps, came as no surprise. Service to the country, just in general, uh, it was always important to me. Uh, it's always raised, you know, you do your civic duty in one capacity or another. On July 27, 2001, Roy signed into his first unit. Before eventually joining CCG with Mark Dodge, Roy had several life-changing experiences. Most positive specific incident, I would say, would be uh, my participation in uh, the late President Reagan's funeral. Getting the honor to lay the, uh, the Speaker of the House wreath there at the ceremony in the rotunda, and then, uh, you know, then going on and being able to stand at the head of his casket as the NCOIC was, um, you know, although obviously not a happy event, um, it's just an amazing event in the history of this country, you know, for, for a man who is such an integral part of the history of this country. And it was just an amazing honor. As a whole, uh, without a doubt, hands down, being a sentinel at the Tomb of the Unknowns, uh, it may be the best job I will ever have. So <laughs> it really is exciting. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a thrill um, to know that you have been given the opportunity to represent something so much greater than yourself, uh, really to, to be out there and, um, and honor the unknowns in, in every movement that you make, every step, every, every rifle movement, um, all of it. And it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a challenge to you know, maintain the focus throughout your entire walk, whether it's 30 minutes in the summer or hour long in the winter, through every walk and then, you know, through your whole walk and then through every walk that you do during the day to maintain that focus at all times to continue to honor the unknowns. I guess to an extent you can make a parallel um, that, uh, you know, yell leaders and, and tomb guards, uh, it's, it has nothing to do with the person that fills the uniform. It's all about maintaining uh, the honor that the uniform and position uh, demands. From 2006 to 2008, Roy was stationed in San Diego, California as an Army recruiter. In 2009, change was once again the order of the day. I reported the first, the 505th uh, Parachute Infantry Regiment. They had already gone wheels up and headed to Iraq, so I showed up, um, got my gear. Uh, I took 10 days of, uh, of leave to get my family settled and get everything unpacked, and then I was pretty much gone to Iraq within about 30 days to catch up with my unit. You know, being away from home is a hardship, and so you know you develop more of those bonds because you got your buddies, your left and right. Like they're on the other side of the world from their loved ones as well. Um, you know they're they're dealing with the 120 degree heat, and uh, you know they're dealing with everything that you're dealing with. Uh, so you, you you know you really develop some strong bonds while you're there. Um, having the the opportunity to be a leader while I was there 
um, definitely helped mold me as a leader, mold me as a person. You know, those are, those are, uh, you can't put a price tag on the opportunity to, uh, to develop yourself as a leader in, in, you know, in those kind of situations. The best moment was getting all of my, my guys home. Um, every single one of my guys came home uh, without a scratch. That's, uh, you know, that's, that's your job as a leader. And uh, that's probably my proudest moment of, of the deployment was, was getting those guys home, all safe. There we go. <laughs> One path after another led Roy across the country. After deployment, it was time for a new path. One that led him home. It was time to go back to school. You know, I kind of hit a crossroads in my career where if I had re-enlisted one more time, I would have been in until retirement. Roy's career had been nothing short of extraordinary. So representing the Texas A&M student body as Yale leader seemed like a natural next step. Core Block is kind of the first time I saw him as a Yale leader candidate. Uh, so he came out every time we had a hangout at Duncan Dining Hall for the evening or he came to a basketball game. So I started seeing him, started seeing his personality. And uh, honestly, it's kind of a funny sight having a at the time, a 33-year-old man come to hang out with a bunch of 19-year-old college students, cadets, if you will. But he's extremely humble. Being a 12-year Army veteran, um, I said, if his classmates decide they want to nominate him, then I'll endorse him as best I can. He doesn't want to be labeled an American hero. He just wants to go out and and be a Yale leader and be part of the AM student body and just love what he's doing every day. I remember the first game watching him run out of the tunnel and lead the football team on. That must have been just an unbelievable feeling for him. Thirty-four-year-old Roy May redefines the term non-traditional student. After all he's experienced, his education is now a priority. Yet it's something else, should we say someone else, that's an even greater priority. He remembers that fateful day in June of 2001. 27 July 2001, the day I signed into the Old Guard is the day that I met my wife. Um, she was actually, uh, she was a, she's a veteran, she's an Army veteran, she was a human resources specialist in the Army. And she was there in the office uh, where personnel sign in. And uh, I mean, I just met her kind of in passing that day. We were friends for a good long while. She's from Chicago. He's got an awesome support system with his wife, um, Megan. She's, she's fantastic. And he, he's kind of really set himself up for success. She's like the heavyweight champion. She's, I mean, she does everything. She's my hero, uh, you know, what she does to, to keep our family, uh, you know, intact and cohesive. And, and it helps that she and I are so much alike. She's been so supportive of everything I, I've, I've done uh, through my career. Um, and she sacrificed so much. Um, having a, you know, every time you move duty stations when the Army sends you somewhere, family's got to come with you. And sometimes there's not an opportunity for any sort of job continuity, you know, for the spouse. And, and there hasn't been. And so she's, you know, she's got a choppy resume because, because of me. You excited? Yes, sir. Being a father is like, it's the greatest, most stressful job on the planet. Pretty much, um, it's the most rewarding, um, and it's the most stressful. Uh, but my my daughter is uh, she's she's something else. Whenever we're at an event that's maybe lasting a lot longer than we anticipated, he'll just kind of say, "Hey, I got to get back and make sure I help my daughter get to sleep, and make sure, or make sure she gets the piano lessons, or make sure she starts doing her reading." Or he's very very family oriented, and it's pretty awesome to see. Being a yell leader is a it's an extra responsibility. It's a big responsibility, but it's um, something that we've been blessed with the opportunity to do, and you know we'll make it happen. Um, that's uh, that's there, there's no question about that. It was the road less traveled that brought Roy May and his family to Aggieland. After an abundance of life experience, what's next for this Aggie and American hero? Roy is a better man than I am, and I and there is no question in my mind. There, there is somebody. Will, you know, somebody will hire him out of A and M, and he'll move on to be an executive, or he'll start his own business. Uh, he, he's going to be successful in whatever he does. Whatever job I get is whatever job I get, as long as it doesn't inconvenience her. Because uh, you know, I, it's time. <laughs> it's time for me to sacrifice for her. For all you know, the, the thousands of things she's done for, for our family, you know, um, and, and you know, and the career career-wise is, is is just such a major one, 
you know, it's, it's time, it's, you know, it's, it's time to make sure that the focus isn't just on me.